Welcome to the 12 days of Christmas where you will learn how to create these really easy gift bags. I have them in a few different sizes. I wanna start with a six by 11 piece of designer series paper. And then this one is a 12 by 12. And you can also fold the front down to make your little flap. Stick around to the end because you're gonna to get to see what we made during the first five days of Christmas crafting. All right, so let's get started with the Joy of Christmas paper. I'm gonna see if this is 11 inches across. Now, if it's not, we'll just, we'll do this. Okay, this is 11, okay, good. It's actually 12. So we're gonna go ahead and make this one the 11 one. Now you're going to, and then later we'll do a 12 one, because I like to give you a few different sizes and I want you to teach you a concept so that you could just make any bag you want for whatever size gift you have. I don't like to just teach things that have to be a certain way. There's, there's many more than, more than one way to do things. So this one is already eight inches and I could do this with six inches, but let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and do this with, because I only have eight inches. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this one a little different than the one I made here. It's the same width, but we're gonna go ahead and make it seven inches. Okay, so this will be, and I'll write down the different measurements for you. So we have 11 inches by seven. Hey, I used to hang out at the 7-Eleven when I was growing up. Have you guys, did you guys hang out at the 7-Eleven and get a, Get yourself a slurpy headache at the 7-Eleven. All right, so we're gonna put this here. And this is the Joy of Christmas paper. Unfortunately, I don't think it's available anymore, even though it is in a current catalog. It's in this catalog. I just don't know if they've replenished it. And as much as I'd love to sit around and shop all day, I don't know. I haven't checked in a while. Oh, not in a while. In two days, I shopped. Well, a couple days ago at like midnight, they let us pre-order from the new catalog, which I'll give you a sneak peek of the front cover. Where are my notes? Because I played around with this. All right, so this one is going to be, since this is our 11 inch one, we're gonna score at one inch. Okay, five inch. Six inch. And 10 inch. So this, what, what we've done here, and you can see that, is we've created score lines that we now have an inch overlap over here, right? She used to prank. What in the world, Kathy? Used to prank call the 7-Eleven? <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you have a pop in the bottle? Let oh my God, better let him out. You're, you're crazy. Okay, so funny. Okay, now we're gonna turn around and we're gonna do one inch. Now, depending on how high you want your bag, like I made this one a little bit higher, so I can go ahead and give myself a good old flap. So we can, let's give ourselves a one inch flap. So we'll just do one and six. All right, so now we're gonna write this down before we get too far into this project. And I don't know what happened to the thing I had last night. I had one of those um, grid sheets. I think I, okay, we'll just use, we're gonna use the back of this grid sheet. All right, so we have 11. This is box one. We're gonna, I mean, not box one, bag one because we're going to make a few bags. But when you when you get done making all the different bags, you're going to go, oh, I can make any kind of bag I want. I don't even have to use our measurements because I now know how to make a bag. So it'll be different ones. So we're going to go, so this was 11, and this was 11 by 7. So now we're going to, if you, if you have to wear, like if you have a horizontal pattern, right, on your paper, then you would make it, Make it so that the pattern goes upright. That's important to, to look at that. All right, I'm gonna draw this for you. Okay, so it's something like that, right? Right? Do, 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 do. Something like that. Get that off. So, you know what I mean? You're gonna, you're gonna score. Score at one inch. I'm just drawing this for you so you can visualize which way you're scoring this. One inch, five inch, six inch, and then again at 10 inch. But the paper is 11 inches, so that just forget that last part. You get the idea. And then we're going to turn 90 degrees and we're gonna score at one inch and six inch. So now our paper is this way, right? 
And so your scores look like that. Do, 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 do. One inch and six inch. All right, so that's that. And I'm going to go ahead and bend one side back. And the other side will be the bottom. So that'll be like the little top top rim. And then, and that has to you know, just stay the way it is. And then this one, you're just going to fold inwards like so. And of course, get your little spatula or bone folder to do all this folding. Or like, we're going to fold this. Just basically burnish, burnish your edges, right? As the saying goes. Okay, now we're going to cut the little... So now open this up. Not the outside. The outside flap, leave it like it is. But this one, you're going to cut off this little corner. And then you're going to just make these into little flaps so you can miter the edges like you do when we're making boxes. In fact, you're like, oh, we just did this. Yes, we just did this when we made a box. So you're making little flaps on two of this. On... So you're cutting one side off and the other side, you're just making a little flap. So don't, don't cut both the corners off. Just cut one corner or the other. And then the other two are little flaps. So that's your bag, and then it's going to tuck in. So those little flaps will tuck in like so. Easy peasy. I told you it's the world's easiest bag. I mean, right? Does it get any easier? I think not. All right, so some. I just I had to show you the basics before I get into anything advanced, right? So, I mean, not advanced, but I, before I show you, I had to kind of go over the basics. Now, you can create your own gusset on the side of your bag like so. Oops. What kind of paper rips like that? What the heck? It was probably my fault because I probably went too deep with that stylus. Anyway, you can also create a little gusset like so. Okay? So you can do that. So just kind of go in there and, you know, sort of at the half inch mark, you can make your little gusset. Even this one just... Now this one, even though it's going to be glued to the other side, you can still make a little gusset at the half inch mark. I just think that's easier when I go to bend the paper later. So now I'm going to take this flap and I'm, that's going to be because it's because it has the little hole in it. That will be where you put the adhesive. Just use rolling adhesive. I'm just using seal plus. You probably could have got rid of this, this little thing at the top, but I just think it kind of looks better if you don't get rid of that little corner at the top. So that's going to be I'm just going to go like that here and get that flap going. Okay. And then, you know, if you wanted to put any adhesive under those, you can. I should have put a little, a little bit of adhesive under that one so it doesn't stick out. Yeah, there we go. Just let, get that to stick out. Now, I mean, not to stick out. Not, don't get it to stick out. Get it not to stick out. Okay. And then put some adhesive on one of these flaps. Doesn't matter which one, just as long as it's just put it on one flap on the bottom, like so. And that will be the, then you're going to tuck the sides in and then that, and then you're going to push this, get it even, even Steven. And then you're going to put the flap like so. I don't know what happened in my, how come one side's a little bit uneven, but it's all good. Now we're going to, now we're going to push the sides in because we've already created that little fold for the gusset. Or you could have just done it with your fingers like that. And you could do the whole handle like I've shown you on the other gift bags. Well, I don't assume you've seen that tutorial, but I'll show you. We, we have a tutorial about making handles. Or it might have been in my recent class called Making and Selling Crafts, which is linked in... Well, is it linked in... The, yes, it's linked in my offerings page, which is in the description of this video. What I do is... Do you see how I'm just doing this? I'm getting ready with my trimmer in case I need to cut anything off the sides. But I didn't need to cut them off this time, but I'm all ready to. Sometimes my flaps stick out at the bottom. So the question I get asked is what fits inside the bag? So first you're going to put some little grass in there. Right from the Dollar Tree. That way your looks like a more fun gift bag. 
And then we're going to get some candies. Not all the same kind of candies. These are some Snowman Ghirardellis. Link to my Amazon store if you guys want to shop there. That would be great to support the channel that, that way. We put a peppermint stick. I got those at Hobby Lobby. You can get Hershey candies anywhere. Oh, there's already a Hershey candy. We'll use the holiday one. And then, I don't know what happened to my little candy cane. It got... This poor candy cane has seen better days. I think I need to eat that one. All right, but you get the idea. So you can put that in there. And then you put your little candies in there. And let's show you what I put in this one. It's just, I can fit, You can fit a lot of stuff in there. Okay. Here, you can put a caramel cookie, dark chocolate. I mean, a lot of stuff will fit in there, just so you have an idea. All righty. And you can make a tag and all that other good stuff. So now let's do one. The reason I wanted to try to do it again with a, a little bit different measurements is we'll go ahead and we'll do a 12 by 6 because then that way you, because our designer series paper is sold in 12 by 12 sheets and that way you can get two out of one bag. Not bag. <laughs> I'm thinking of candy, guys. Can you tell I'm thinking of candy? One, two out of one sheet. So still going to be, this first part will be one inch. All right, so let's try to do that. And we're going to just take I think I'm going to use the the red side of this joy of Christmas paper. All right, so we're going to look at this one. This one is going to be we're still going to do the 1 inch on the sides, right? But this one has to be four and a half across. So it's a wider bag. So one, where's my stylus? So we still got the one. But this time we got to go four and a half. One, two, three, four and a half. Which so we're at five and a half. And then we got a one, right? Six and a half. And then there's a half. One, two, three, four. And at the end, we have that extra little inch left over. All right, so let's write that one down. I'm a very visual person. I need my little diagrams here. So we got the one. And then we got the da 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 And then we have another. And then we have another. And then that'll just be like that. So it'll be, so it's going to be one inch. And then it's five and a half. Oops. I don't know why I put five and a six. And then we have six and a half. And then we have 11. That's the 11 mark, right? So score. At, and there's your measurements. And then you're going to flip it around the side. And this time it's only six inches tall. So you don't want to do as much, right? So let's say three quarters of an inch for this side because we need to have a tall enough bag. And the bottom, I still think, well, let's do, let's still do N5. Let's still make the bottom solid. Okay. Three quarters of an inch. So turn. Now, because we still want the bottom to be wide, like so, but the top can be narrow. This one doesn't have a top little flap. So for this one, this one's a little bit different. We're making the top flap. So score at, all right, three quarters and five inches. Let's do this. All right, that's gonna be the front of the bag. So again, I like to fold this part down first. And one more variation of this is that you might want to Go ahead and seal this now. I mean, you don't have to do this little part. It's fine if you don't, but if you seal it, it does. That flap stays down a lot better. And then this is going to be the bottom of the bag. So these are just my go-to craft items. 
Making bags, making my own envelopes, making my own boxes for any size gift that you want based on the paper that you have. It was really challenging to find 12 by 12 paper because I, I cut so much of it up into six by six. So one side needs a flap. It doesn't really matter which side. I think I made that flap a little too big. Let's turn it over. It's easier to see from this end. Well, it's easier for me to see. I don't know if you could see that. Okay, so we're cutting. One, one side needs a little. There's actually two flaps, and then there's like the one cut out. It's like not one side needs a flap. One side needs like a hole cut in it, or you cut out the corner of it. And then the other two sides, the other two little ones left over are flaps. Mitering the edges. This one, I have a really cute thing to put on this one for retire. I have a retired item from this truck that we used to have and a wobble springs. I think that's what I'm going to do for this red. I was looking for like a red color to do for this one. So let's see. This side is up because this side has the little chunk taken out of it. That's where I'm going to put the adhesive on the side with the chunk taken out of it. And I could do the whole thing with the gusset and all that business. You guys know how to do that now too, but we're gonna just do that by hand, folding my fingers in it. So that's the way I usually do it. I usually don't use the stylus to make the sides because sometimes I don't want the sides to be gusseted. So flap these, you don't need any adhesive on the side flaps, but you definitely need side flaps. Otherwise I'm putting an extra little bit. Of, if you don't have side flaps, your candy will fall right out the sides. You need the little side flaps. But they don't need to have any adhesive on them. And that's the part I was talking about, to cut off the edge. Because sometimes when I... Remember I told you I'm all ready with my scissors? There you go. Sometimes, like, I don't put this part evenly on the bottom. See? It's a little wonky, so then that's why I need to trim that little put up. See? Perfect little bag with a beautiful... You definitely need double-sided double -side designer series paper. Now I just make the gusset by hand on the side, like so. Give it a little pinch. You're literally pinching an inch. Look at that. I bet that would be a good caption for my video, how to pinch an inch, because then people would think I was talking about something else. <laughs> uh, my crafters pinch an inch as well. There you go. Now we're going to get some stuffing. Put that in there. And I have this cute little... I have these cute little things that I, that I colored in. And they match because it's shaded spruce and let's see. What's this card? Shaded spruce and real red. Definitely need some Wink Stella. Okay, let's get. So Wobble Springs. Wobble Springs are found in, in my Stampin' Up store. And not Stampin' Up store. Sorry, sorry. Scratch that. We don't sell them at Stampin' Up. They're found in my Amazon store. I have a lot of stores. As can you tell, I have a lot of stores. So I have, a, I have an Amazon store where I recommend products. And paper and things like that are usually on my Stampin' Up store. But this one is at my... So the Wobble Springs are found at my Amazon store. So I'm just going to put that... I'm, I'm not going to do it right now because of time. This looks like I colored it in Poppy Parade or Real Red. And this one looks like I colored it in Cherry Cobbler. So I think I'm going to use this one. And just finish coloring it because it's already on a wobble spring. But you can see that I can put that on the bag. Look how look how beautiful that coordinates. One thing I love. See, I have to finish coloring the tire. I completely left off mid-color. But look at this. It says, wishing you loads of Christmas cheer. And it'll wobble. This little spring will wobble. But I need to stick it on there. And I just need to finish coloring it. So that's going to be on that bag there. And then I'll take another picture when I'm done decorating my bags. So your bags definitely need a sentiment. Okay, we'll do one more variation. We're gonna make it a little, we're gonna just make a little a bag a little bit taller. And I will use some retired paper because I have I have it, so we'll make it. So we're gonna go for the seven inches. Now we'll, we'll go, we'll do, we'll actually, we'll do eight inches. Then you'll have a really tall bag. We'll have eight inches. 
And that way it'll be six inches high. So I just want to show you that it like, really doesn't matter what you do here. We're going to use the same measurements as before. We're going to make it, except we're going to make it taller. That's all. So, you know, once you learn how to make a bag, you make a bag. And if you want to score this side first, you score this side first. Right? You can score one and, and um, here, let's see how big we want to make that. Let's do one and six and a half. Okay? Do you see what I mean? It doesn't matter. Every bag is a little different because you, you want this bag to be taller, but you want the flap. See what I'm saying? You want the bag to be taller, but you want the flap to be longer. Okay, that's as easy as that. Anyway, let me open it back up to get this part scored. So we have one, five and a half, six and a half, and 11. Get this to go straight. I don't know if you can see the 11. So, I'm just going to use my little phone folder. Yeah, and don't, when you're using your stylus tool on the simply scored, simply scored school board, be careful, you know, not to dig too much into the paper because our designer shows paper, for the most part, or, I mean, I don't want to say all, but for the most part, it is white inner core so if you it can it can rip you can get the white the white part might show through all right i'm just gonna i'm gonna cut this side out now it doesn't really matter which side i cut out sometimes the score lines are hard to see Man, I wish I would have bought more of this paper a couple years ago. It's called Celebrate Everything, and it, it was in a pack of 48 sheets, and it's like so, been so useful year-round for me. I mean, there's fireworks on this paper. There's Halloween stuff. I've been using it year-round. I just used it for Halloween this year. Look at this little pack of paper. But anyway, when you like something, moral of the story is get... See, this paper has been so useful. Look at the fireworks. Celebrate Everything. I've been using it all the time. But when you like something... Get it before we run out because that is what happens. So you notice how the pattern has to be horizontal. So that was the other tip and trick for you. This time, you know what? I'm not going to adhere the flap. I'm just going to adhere the... I'm only going to adhere this little side part of the flap. Put a little bit of adhesive on the, on the side. Maybe, maybe a little bit on this side. No, one side's going to be... Wait, is that the side that goes under? Nope, it me I meant to put adhesive on this side. I just wanted to put a little adhesive on the edges. I don't really need it under this part, but the part that goes under, you need it on. I'm the bag lady. Okay, so that's that. And then now I'm gonna put a little bit, just, I'm gonna go like that and get some some room there. The Seal Plus is really strong. That's why I'm not worried about the bottoms of my bags falling apart. But if you're using cheap glue, if you're using liquid glue, the bottom of your bag won't fall off. But if you're using cheap adhesive, then your bags might fall off, like the whole bottom might fall out. So use strong adhesive for the bottom of these. Tear and tape is a great thing for making bags. That's a great adhesive. Yeah, I'm kind of liking this one. So I'll write down that one for you. Now that I now that I like it, I'll write it down. Put that. I like I like keeping the top on it because it makes it so strong, like all around the top and the sides. That makes it real strong. Okay, you're gonna gusset it. So you can put a gift card in here and all kinds of stuff. Hot cocoa packets. This would be great for craft fairs. We could do snowman soup and write that you have snowman soup in there. Put hot cocoa and some Hershey Kisses. Maybe by tomorrow I'll put something else in these bags when I do my next installment. 
tomorrow or the next day of the 12 days of Christmas crafting. So this one, all we did for this one was, let me get rid of the scoreboard because I have crafts to show you now. And so I want to say hi to everybody before I show you my crafts. All right, so that one was, I said, hey, let's do an eight inch one. So all I did was I did this and, we st and then we scored at, we still did the scoring at one and five and a half and six and a half and 11. So that part was the same. And then at the bottom, we turned it. So 90 degrees. And then we score, score at, and this time we did, so we had eight inches across, right? So we did one inch. And then we what did we do? Six and a half? I think this is six. Someone else will keep me straight. Let's see how big this is. One inch and yeah, this is one and a half. I said, let's have a big flap. So we did. Six and a half because the paper was taller. So comparing that to the one we made before that, look, we just made this one right before it. Wait, did we do that one before it or did we do this one? No, I'm sorry. We did. I forget already what we did. We did this one right before it. So I'm trying, I'm trying to give you a good comparison here. So the difference between these two bags, there's just the very subtle differences. They're the same. Nope, they're not the same width. Okay, let's see. This one was this one. These two are the same bag. All right. So this is the difference between these two bags. Is that this one was a 12 by 6 and this one was a 12 by 8. Okay, so these bags are each, they're the same, right? But one's taller. So just use a taller piece of paper, but still 12 inches wide and make the bag four and a half inches wide. Okay, now this bag is the first bag we made. I already forgot what was my first bag we made, but this one was four inches wide and seven inches tall. So you see all the differences, the subtle differences between all these different bags just by, but you, it's like you learn the concept. You, this one doesn't have a flap. You don't need a flap. But if you have a flap, that's cute, right? Same concept. This one has a half inch or, you know, little tiny rim around it. But it's still the four. This one's still the four inch wide. Right? This one just uses another inch. So they're all pretty much every one of these bags. At least I can compare that part. They're all an inch on the sides. Right? So that's parts the same. Put them all like that. So you can see all that. But they're all different heights and different flaps and all that. So you just kind of mess around with your measurements and you can make bags till your heart's content. S'more fixins. Oh, I love that. I love that. Denise, great idea for s'more fixins. Thank you, Cindy. And I'm glad you like how I'm using up my retired DSP. I have to use it. Hey, can't take it with me. I'm just using it every chance I get and then I just buy more. I got to make room for more DSP. They're having a DSP sale right now in the clearance section, so check out my Stampin' Up! store. A lot of it's not 12 by 12, though. Well, some of it is. Desert something. There's some desert paper that's 12 by 12 and some... There's a few 12 by 12, so a lot of them are 6 by 6. So, thank you, Rose. Likes the bigger size. Thank you. Hello, Kathy from Backyard Stamper. And Jill is here and likes that I'm doing bags. Well, I'm trying to change it up. I do box. Yesterday, we did box in a bag. I'm going to show you all these things while I'm talking to you. So Janet's sitting there saying she's creating the box in the bag right now. And then, hello, Linda. So that's cool. She's creating last night's craft. Hello from Connecticut. Linda Blankfield. Is your refrigerator running? Better go catch it. You guys got some bad dad jokes there. Bad crank calling jokes. <laughs> hello. Yvonne, hello. No caller ID back then, Rose is saying, when you guys were talking about the 7-Eleven. Um, yes, is it better than scoring on the scoreboard than the cutter? 100%, a thousand times better scoring on the scoreboard than the trimmer. For me, for me, I can't stand using the score. There's a scoring tool that comes on the trimmer. I don't like it. Um, the only good thing about scoring on the trimmer, the one thing about scoring on the trimmer is that you can do sixteenths of an inch scoring. So that's the nice part. And you don't need another tool because you can cut and score on the same trimmer. So that's a good question, right? Here's what the scoring tool looks like. Here's what the cutting blade looks like. The scoring tool has a little round thing on it, and the cutting blade, of course, has a blade on it. 
But no, of course it's easier to score on the simply scored. That's why it's called simply scored because it's simple to score. Even Janet's agreeing with me. So it's not just me saying it. What do you guys think? Other crafters chime in. It's 1000% easier for me to score in the simply scored. Hello, Amy. And Denise and Lori and Phil and Lara, Melissa, Dawn, and the other Phil. All right, let's do this. Yesterday we made boxes in a bag. I still have these. They weren't really finished. My friend did come over and get some crafts from me today, but she got Hershey nuggets, treats, and paper purses. So I still have all of these to show you. So this was our box in a bag. And of course, there's a string that goes around that. Check out that from yesterday. Box in a bag. See the box on the bottom and it's in a bag. All right. I'm not showing these in any particular order. We also showed this as part of the series. This was the first day of Christmas. We showed how to make this really cool treat box. And then I made them with six by six papers. This really cool treat box. And guess what? It's a hanging ornament. So that's pretty cool. I'm not opening this up again though because it was a heck, it's a heck of a time getting it closed. And once it hangs... The person doesn't open it till you give them the treat. Then you, you don't have to make it hanging. This is when you use the four inch DSP. Don't go less than four inch for the DSP. Too small. I don't know what that's doing there. This is a retired die. We'll put that out of the way. We did this one. We did the stand up double fold treat pouch in one of the days of the seven day, or the 12 days of Christmas crafting. Here's another one, double fold treat pouches. So all these holiday craft ideas I hope you can use. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Tic Tac Snowmen. Okay, Tic Tac Snowmen. So we did this one with this brother scan and cut on day two of the 12 days of Christmas. These cookies fit inside all of these different crafts. And let's see, I gotta go through the days to make sure I've shown you everything. So on the first day of Christmas, we did a paper craft. We did a hanging ornament, okay? On the second day of Christmas, we did a Tic Tac Snowman. All right, on the third day of Christmas, let's see, we did the stand-up double fold treat pouch on the third day. On the fourth day, we did the doggy treats. That's what it was, the doggy treats. And the, and the well, that's a doggy treat tag. I'm putting these on my, these are my tags for the other treats. Okay, just pull those off. This is, we made um, hot cocoa jars, with the peppermint spoons, and we made doggy treats. And the, I, I mentioned that the jar punch is on clearance right now. I think it's like $11 and something, something cents, 40 cents, 80 cents. But it's, the jar, you know, the punches are usually over $26. They're really good steel punches. So if you like the jar punch, use the link to my Stampin' Up! store. All right. Another one, the little doggy paper. So that's what we made on the, that was the fourth day. And then the fifth day of Christmas was the stand-up box in a bag. And then on the sixth day of Christmas, we made, we made these. Okay, we made the gift bags. All right, we still have, I'm still going to play around with my snow globe. I'm going to try to make a snow globe project. And I still have the sour cream containers to show you. And I always give you a sneak peek of something that's coming up in the, 12 days of Christmas, so I'm going to show you another bag. We're not doing this bag tomorrow because we just did a bag. But my friend Kathy, who's here, taught me how to make this really cool bag. And this is this is the gift card holder bag. Or just a smaller bag. And it has a trim and it has ribbon. So we will get to this bag by the 12th day of Christmas. So you're, gonna, you're getting... Um, where did I get my Christmas jars? Okay. Yesterday I went over all that. Dollar General. They're only a dollar. So the Dollar Tree... Things are $1.25 now. So it's kind of like, hey, that's a ripoff. We want to pay a dollar. So go to Dollar General and you can get these jars for $1 only. Okay. And then you get a coupon if you shop there during the week to go back on a Friday. And you get on a Friday, I mean on a Saturday, sorry. So if you get something during the week, whatever you get, it doesn't matter how big or small your order is. They will give you a $5 coupon to go back and shop on Saturday. So you can get so many jars. I bought it once when I went back. Thank you, Denise. Okay, Lori's saying the penguin punch is only four fifty. I did not know that. There's a penguin builder punch that's only four fifty. So I'm, I'm not getting another one because I already have a penguin punch. But I do. That's why the punches are still there. A lot of stuff ran out the second they started the clearance sale the other day. 
like like within an hour. But the punches didn't run out because the punches, like we tend to only have one each as a crafter. But what I did is I went back and ordered some for prizes because they're so, they make such great prizes. Yes, they're a bear to ship. They're really hard to ship because they cost a fortune to ship. But th the thing about it is, is like I got the punch for less so I can offer it to someone as a prize when they run out of punches. All right, we're going to keep on crafting. Hang out and keep on crafting. You don't have Dollar Generals near you? Yvonne, I can send you some if you want me to send you jars. You would just have to pay postage, but they're still so cheap, so it wouldn't be that expensive to send them empty jars to you. Just message me. All right, bye, everybody. Have a great evening.